मैं दिखा रही हूँ तो इस वाली सीट पे बैठता हूँ सबसे अधिक हम तो गरीब मुद्दे है ना अभी वो जो फोन बजा ना नहीं तो भी को बात करने में रुकी जाती अरे नीति कैसा था इस बार सब बिल्कुल परफेक्ट परफेक्ट वो वहां से वो आपने साइट को चेंज कर दी ना <coughs> The majority of the firms of a particular industry have been granting, say, three months credit to a customer. Others will have no other way except to follow the majority. 
due to the fear of losing customer however there are certain problems in this approach the classification of units into a particular industry is not that easy deciding an average to represent a particular industry is highly difficult averages have no meanings to any form since the nature of firms differ industry norm approach may result in imitative behavior resulting in damage to innovation this may also promote high demental thus limiting the scope for excellence on account of these reasons industry on the road is not suggested by many as the benchmark for making investment in current affairs the second approach is economic modeling approach model building has become a crucial exercise in many disciplines as far as working capital is concerned optimum investment in inventory is start to be decided with the help of eoq model eoq is given by a simple equation is by root 2 so divided by c and s is stands for annual usage of material O stands for ordering cost per order, and C stands for carrying cost per unit. William J. Bowman has attempted to apply this model to the determination of optimum cash balance that can be held by an enterprise. the transaction demand for money is start to be analyzed from this point of view as per the model the optimum level of cash is decided by the carrying cost of holding cash and the cost of transferring marketable securities to cash and vice versa in this model in place of so in the eoq formula so is replaced by pt v stands for transaction cost per transaction and t stands for total demand for cash and from eoq formula C has been replaced by I, and I is the interest rate. By this formula, we calculate optimum cash balance. As in the economic order quantity formula, we calculate optimum order quantity. Similarly. Solosky, the decision to sell to a particular account should be based objectively upon the application of profit maximization model. In this regard, Robert and Solosky developed a model for accounts receivable. He has laid down the following formula for making a credit decision, leading to optimum investment in risk. As for the formula, we have to say when the difference of M M stands for profit margin is 
equal or more than zero. The difference between M compared to B plus T I plus C oblique O. The formula is explained here. M stands for profit margin. B stands for probability of a credit sale becoming a bad debt. T stands for time period. I for interest rate. And C stands for cost per order of selling on credit as an implicit function of risk. O is the order self. Means if the difference is more than or equal to zero, only then sell. The third approach is is strategic choice approach. Unlike industry norm approach and economic modeling approach, this is not a standard method. This suggests certain benchmarks to work with. The strategic choice approach recognizes the variations in business practices and advocates the use of his strategy in taking working capital decisions. The strategic choice approach presupposes a highly competitive environment and the willingness of the management to take it. The success of the approach also depends on the ability of the management to set realistic goals and prepare suitable strategy to achieve them. Factors influencing determination of working capital requirements. The working capital requirements of a firm depends on a number of factors. Often influence of operating cycle is considered paramount. The term operating cycle can be understood to represent the length of time required for the completion of each of the stages of operations involved in respect of working capital items. The four important stages of that can be identified as first of all, raw materials are purchased. So then the first stage is raw materials and stores inventory stage. Then these raw materials are put to the production process and then we come to the work in progress stage. After production process, the goods is finally prepared and we come to the third stage, finished goods inventory stage. Now the goods is sold. If it is sold in cash, the operating cycle will, com will be completed at this stage. But if it is sold on credit, then the last stage will be their book debts stage. For different industries, this operating cycle may be different. The following is the formula he used to arrive at the operating cycle period in an enterprise. Operating cycle is here represented by T. 
total period of operating cycle in number of days. R is the number of days of raw materials and the stores consumption requirements held in raw materials and the stores inventory. C is the number of days purchases included in trade printers. Or you may say R minus C is the difference of the number of days of credit sales and number of days of trade takers. R is the raw materials and the stores consumption requirements. Means what were we have invested in the raw materials and stores. And if it is financed by the credit purchases, trade creditors are deducted from the R. W is the number of days of the cost of production held in work in progress. F is the number of days of cost of sales included in finished goods. And B is the number of days of sales in book days. And these items are calculated in this way. R is calculated average inventory of raw materials and stores divided by average materials and stores consumption per day. C is calculated average state caters divided by average purchases per day. W is calculated average work in progress divided by average cost of production per day. F is calculated average inventory of finished goods divided by average cost of sales per day. And P is calculated average book debts divided by average sales per day. I have explained here this calculation of operating cycle with the help of one illustration. ABC company plans to achieve annual sales of 1 lakh units for the year 2024. The following is the cost structure of the company as per previous figure. Materials 50%, labor 20%, overheads 10%. Raw materials are expected to remain in stores for an average period of one month before issue to production. Finished goods are to stay in the warehouse for two months on an average before being sold and sent to customer. Each unit of production will be in process for one month on the average. Credit allowed by the suppliers is one month from the date of delivery of materials. Debtors are allowed credit for two months from the date of sale of goods. Selling price per unit is rupees nine per unit, and production and sales follow a consistent pattern, and there are no wide fluctuations. Now it's calculation. Raw material. It is given that we are going to produce or achieve sales of 1 lakh units multiplied by selling price per unit rupees 9. And the raw material cost is 50%. And in raw materials are expected to remain in stores for an average period of one month. Therefore, calculation is 1 lakh multiplied by 9, multiplied by 50%, multiplied by 1 month, that is in terms of year 1 upon 12. Work in progress, same calculation, 1 lakh multiplied by 9, multiplied by 
एट्टी परसेंट फिफ्टी परसेंट ट्वेंटी परसेंट प्लस टेन परसेंट और एट्टी परसेंट दिस बिकम्स फॉर वन मंथ फिनिश गुड्स इन्वेंट्री सेम अगेन वन लैक मल्टीप्लाइड बाई नाइन बट फॉर टू मंथ एंड अगेन एट्टी परसेंट डेट फॉर टू मंथ but now here it will not be the cost but it will be the sales amount therefore it is 100% less current liabilities for one month creditors one lakh the same materials amount it is calculated here and the now difference is working capital required the explanation which i have given you they are given here raw materials inventory is expressed in raw materials consumption work in progress inventory is expressed in cost of production cost of production is the total of materials labor and overhead finished goods inventory is supposed to have been expressed in terms of cost of sales since separate details are not given the figures are worked out on cost of production that is our expressed in terms of total sales value creditors are expressed in terms of capital consumption since separate figures are not available for purchase but we should keep it in mind that we are concerned with the credit purchases not cash purchases factors influencing determination of working capital requirements a company's working capital requirements are directly related to the type of business operation the first and most important factor is management's attitude towards risk if working capital is varied relative to sales the amount of risk that firm assumes also varies and the opportunity of for gain or loss is increased capital should be invested in each component of working capital as long as the equity position of the firm increases the type of capital used to finance working capital directly affects the amount of risk that a firm assumes as well as the opportunity for gain or loss and cost of capital the greater the disparity between the maturity of a firm sort on debt instrument and flow of internally generated funds the greater the risk and vice versa second factor is growth and expansion of business it is logical to expect that larger amounts of working capital are needed to support the increasing operations of the business concern but there is no simple formula to establish the link between growth in the company's volume of business and the growth of working capital third factor product policies depending upon the kind of items manufactured by adjusting its production schedules a company may be able to offset the effects of seasonal fluctuations upon working capital position of the business cycle besides the nature of business manufacturing process and production policies cyclical and seasonal changes 
also influence the size and behavior of working capital. Next factor is terms of purchase and sale. The magnitude of the working capital of a business is also affected by the terms of purchase and sale. There are some other factors also like operating efficiency, profit levels, management policies towards dividend, depreciation and other measures, price table changes, shifts in demands for products, competitive conditions, vagaries in supply of raw materials, import policy of the government, hazards and contingencies and nature of business, etc. All these factors determine the amount of working capital required by an undertaking. Now we move on to the next part, management of current assets. The first management part of with current assets is receivables. Now, management of receivables. The investment in accounts receivable is an important aspect which requires careful management. Besides the cost of investment, there are two types of risk which are associated with the accounts receivable management. The first is risk of opportunity loss and the second is liquidity risk. And this, these two risks you will find in every component of current assets. While high investments in accounts receivable warrant efficient management, significant differences between industry call for proper structuring of trade policy that match the industry norms. These two are essential issues in management of receivable. The receivable management system thus involves three important things. The first one is corporate policy regarding terms of credit. For example, market leadership. If the company wants market leadership, then the terms of credit will be liberal liberal credit will be allowed to the customers so that there will be a large amount of sale and we can achieve market leadership. The second point is assessing customers credit worthiness to grant credit. And third one is monitoring the level of accounts receivables and improving collection efficiency. These three points we will discuss in detail after some time. The objectives that drive the issues of receivable management are obtain optimum volume of sales. But here the word maxima actually stands for optimum. Optimum so that we may get the best economic returns, financial returns. Maintain proper control over the quantum or amount of investment in debtors. Exercise control over the cost of credit and collections. Now we discuss these three factors. First one, credit policy. 
designing trade policy is the first step in the tables method in designing credit policy the management can follow two broad approaches firstly the policy can be designed under the assumption of unlimited production or sales and funds are available for investment in receiving under the second approach the credit policy could be designed keeping in mind the limitation on production or sales volume and funds available for investment in this field the second approach is aimed to achieve optimum utilization of production capacity and funds available for this field it also ensures consistency of trade policy the trade policy consists of four components credit period discount credit eligibility and credit we are discussing them one by one the first one credit period decision on credit period is determined by several factors such as the credit period given by other firms in the industry keeping in mind the corporate policy for example market share and simultaneously keeping in mind the cost of credit cost of extending credit period delay in cash inflows the interest cost of short term borrowing arises mainly on account of extending the credit period cost of carry inventory this arises mainly on account of increased volume attracted by the extended credit period Which in turn requires more inventory to support increased work. Discount and back debt expenses, increase in trade sales and period would prompt firms to announce attractive discount policy for prompt payment. Similarly, back debt will also go up due to increased volume of. credit sales cost of collection the cost of collection also goes up when the trade period is increased and more credit volume is done cost of collection includes cost of maintaining records of credit sales telephone calls letters personal visits to customers etc these costs tend to show an uptrend with increased volume and credit sales second part of credit policy policy relates to discount when a firm pursues aggressive credit policy it affects cash flows in the form of delayed collection and back discounts are offered to the customers who purchase the goods on credit as an incentive to give up the credit period and pay much earlier for example suppose the terms of credit is 3 oblique 10 net 60 this term means if the customer who gets 60 days period can we can pay within 10 days from the date of purchase and a discount of 3% on the value of order credit eligibility having designed trade period and discount rate the next logical step is to define the customers 
who are eligible for the credit terms. The credit granting decision is critical for the seller since credit granting has economic value to buyers and buyers decision on purchase is directly affected by this policy. The decision whether a particular customer is eligible for credit terms generally involves a detailed analysis of some of the attributes of the customer, which is also called famous five C's of credit analysis. These five C's are capital, character, collateral, capacity and conditions. Capital stands for financial position of the applicant. Character is willingness to pay. Collateral, the amount which the customer is willing to give as security to decide the risk. Capacity is the plant capacity and management capacity to run the business. And conditions are the economic conditions of the industry. In this, the most important thing is first three items. And in order, the first is character, then capital, then collector. We will discuss these C's after some time also. Now the credit limit. If a customer falls within the desired limit of credit worthiness, the next issue is fixing the credit amount. If a customer is new, Normally, the credit limit is fixed at the lowest level initially and expanded over the period based on the performance of the customer in meeting the liability. Credit limit may undergo a change depending on the changes in the credit worthiness of the customer and changes in the performance of customer's industry. If the credit worthiness of the customer increases, then the credit limit will be expanded. If the performance of customer's industry is good, then credit limit will be decreased. Time for credit will be decreased. If there are more and more demands in the market, then the seller will like to sell only on cash and not on credit. There are several reasons for limiting the credit facility to the customers. Some important reasons are reduce the impact of deficiencies in credit granting decisions. Reduce the scope for overbuying by the customers. Rationally allocate the limited funds available for investment in bills receivable. And the most important one, mitigate agency problems. Agency problem arises on account of conflict of interest between the managers and equity shareholders. Here, the equity shareholders are the owners or principals and managers are agents. 
agents will always try to maximize their return even if it is at the cost of principal and on account of this thing there are two types of agency problem arise first managers may collude with some of the customers and grant credit even to undesirable customers to show that managers performance is very good they are making huge amount of sales but in the long run it may be that the amount is has become better secondly managers may hesitate to give credit to even credit worthy customers when the performance of managers is assessed on the basis of collection efficiency means the problems relate to the policy of the company if the policy is to make more and more sales then the first problem will be there the managers will give credit even to the undesirable customers but if the company's policy is to control the collections then the managers may not give even credit to the good customers worthy customers also credit evaluation models these models are useful for the analysis to process the information to decide credit worthiness of the customer the first one is decision tree model under decision tree model credit applications are rated under different parameters for instance if a company uses 5c factor the analysts rate the credit applicants under each of the 5c decision tree is initially created for all possible routes and decisions are taken on the basis of every route here i have taken only 3c already this is a big tree first of all character means whether the customer is willing to pay or not. if the character is strong then we will see capital means financial position of the customer this may also be strong and weak if it is only strong then whether the customer is in a position to give some collateral this may be again is strong or weak if all the three c's character capital collateral all the three are strong means it is the excellent and the customer may be granted large credit limit but if character is strong but capital is weak and at the same time collateral may be strong may be weak this is fair risk and limited credit will be allowed to the customer limited credit depending upon the 
collateral which is given by the customer. If character itself is weak, but capital is strong, collateral may be strong or weak. This is the same fair risk, and the amount of credit is limited to the collateral. If the character is weak. Capital is also weak. If collateral is strong, then the credit is limited to collateral. And if collateral is also weak, no credit will be allowed. This is explained here. The figure illustrates decision tree model using three credit information. Capital, character, and collector. If character, capital, and collector are strong, the applicant firm is granted large amount of credit. If the first two, character, capital, are strong, collateral is weak, a limited credit could be granted. If the character is weak, but capital and collateral are strong, then credit is limited to collateral value. If all three are weak, it is a dangerous proposal and hence it should be rejected. The another approach for the evaluation is multivariate statistical model. A credit scoring system utilizes multiple discriminant analysis to categorize potential credit customers into two groups, good credit risk and bad credit risk. When a credit scoring model is constructed with historical data of a few customers, the model would produce an equation as given below. MDA score of a customer Y. B1X1 plus B2X2 plus B3X3 and so on up to B1X7. B1, B2, B3 or up to B and R coefficient value of variables. These variables x1, x2, x3 may be debt equity ratio, current ratio, etc. The model produces the coefficient values and when a new application is received for credit scoring, the value of x r to be measured and substituted in the model equation to get the discriminant score. The discriminant is then compared with the point of separation to place the applicant in one of the two group, groups that is good credit risk group or bad credit risk group. Credit scoring models are periodically updated to take into account changes in the environment and also reassesses the credit worthiness of the person. Rating methodology. This rating methodology is for the company as well as for the individual. First of all, for company, credit rating has become one of the professionalized services in recent past. For instance, Chrysalis. Rating methodology include following key factors for deciding the credit worthiness of borrowing company. These key factors are five. Business analysis, which includes industry risk, 
market position of the company within industry operating efficiency of the company and legal position of the company then financial analysis of the company accounting quality earnings production adequacy of cash flows financial flexibility then management evaluation of the company track record of management planning and control systems depth of managerial talent and success and plans evaluation of capacity to overcome adverse situation goals philosophy and strategy regulatory and competitive environment in which the company is working the structure and regulatory framework of the financial system trends in regulation key regulation and their impact on the <coughs> company and last one is <coughs> <coughs> fundamental analysis of the company capital education asset quality liquidity management profitability and financial position interest and tax sensitivity after these five analysis kissel gives the great work in nest of a borrowing company now individual credit ratings there are now costing institutions like onida individual credit rating agency onicra developing a specific methodology to help in rating individuals as consumers Onicra model consider following three parameters as important: individual considerations, transactions considerations, and environmental considerations. Environmental considerations are related to economy. Individual considerations, personal strength. which include qualification and occupation stability means job tenure duration of stay in personal place of residence capability which relate to income and future job prospects its strength financial aspects discipline and willingness to pay transaction considerations include two things risk and modalities of payment risk is related to security ownership of the asset control over and use of the product collateral and exposure model t the payment relates to direct deduction from salary advance post dated checks automated debiting of bank account payment on due date or payment on demand and environmental consideration what is the shape of economy on the basis of all these considerations we decide the individual credit ratings monitoring receivables managing receivables does not end with granting of credit as dictated by credit policy 
there are several possible reasons for customers to deviate from the payment terms. Few of these possible reasons and their implications in credit management are discussed before. Changing customer business characteristics. Means how the business is going on. For example, we have seen this COVID-19. There were sometimes almost no demand. And the result was the receivables were becoming difficult to collect. Inaccurate policy forecast. Improper policy implementation. Investments in receivables and collection period. The collection period is computed as follows. Accounts receivable divided by credit sales per day. Aging schedule or age analysis. This is one of the age-old technique implied to analyze the receivable. The receivables are categorized into diverse slots based on the time frame by which they are due. The general assumption is that longer the time schedules, the more likely is the default. Another way to spot changes in customers' behavior is to decompose outstanding receivables at the end of each month by calculating outstanding amount as a percentage of monthly sales. Civil, that is Credit Information Bureau India Limited, is scoring also help in this regard. Civil makes different scoring on the basis of the analysis which we have just discussed and give a great score to every customer for the purpose of collection of the receivables. Collecting receivables. The analysis explained earlier is useful to know the trend of collection and identify customers who are not paying on due dates. This should enable the management to take appropriate action to collect the dues. This is the main objective for receiving management. Management of collection activities should be based on careful comparison of likely benefits and costs. We should keep in mind if we make hard collection process, you will collect the debts. At the same time, you may lose the customer. Means there should be a careful comparison of likely benefits and cost. For collecting the receivables, two alternatives are available to firms. Factoring and receivable securitization. Factoring enables the firm to transfer the receivable to factoring agent who takes the responsibility of collection. The debtors, the, the debtors who are not paying properly, they are transferred to a particular factoring agent who takes this responsibility. 
he is paid a certain percentage of some of the amount of debtors and he makes all the methods to collect the debtors and sometimes they are also physical methods receivable securitization somewhat similar to factory but here the securitization agent sells the units of receivable to investors in the market now we come to the management of cash cash is basic input to start a business unit cash is required for investment in fixed assets like plant and machinery which enable the firm to produce products and generate cash by selling them the second area where cash is invested is the working capital the cash investment in raw materials at the beginning of working capital cycle goes through several stages which we have already just discussed work in progress finish goals and can be get and debts released at the end of cycle to fund fresh investment needs of farmers apart from these two fixed assets and working capital the cash is also invested in the to buy more fixed assets more working capital operations increase the level of operation and any change in working capital cycle such as extending credit period to the customer cash management in a broader sense is managing the entire business in the context of working capital management cash management refers to optimizing the benefits and costs associated with holding cash the objective of cash management is to balance the cost associated with holding cash and benefits derived out of holding the cash the objective is best achieved by speeding up the working capital cycle but poorly the collection process and investing surplus cash in strong term assets in most profitable avenues the important issues relating to management of cash are understanding the motives behind holding the cash quantifying the cash needs of the funds to achieve the above motive and developing a cash management model to enable operating managers to take decision on investing surplus cash and selling investment to fund sources the motives of holding cash transaction motives precautionary or hedging motive speculative motive and managing uneven supply and demand for cash transaction motives are real cash payment required money is required to settle customers bills pay salary and wages to worker pay duties and taxes etc precautionary or hedging motive is cash needs for uncertain transaction for the speculative motive is to exploit opportunity a 
and managing our uneven supply and demand for gas. Farms generally experience some seasonality in sales, which leads to excess cash flows in certain period of the year. This is not permanent surplus, and cash is required at different points of time. We will continue this management of cash in the next counseling session as well. That's all. Thank you. Namaste. Shadow? Um.